Hey everybody, it's David Carr, and here I am once again with another episode of How I Edit. And uh, if you're somebody who's interested in photography and you've got a great camera and you've already been out shooting and you just wanna know what to do with those photos once you've got them on your computer, hopefully this is helpful for you. And uh, you can leave comments uh, below and I'd love to hear your thoughts. But without further ado, we're gonna dive right into this image. So here's a photograph I shot in Yellowstone National Park last year in the dead of winter. Obviously, it was an incredibly cold day and um, so cold that there is what we call diamond dust, which is like little flecks of frozen moisture just floating around. It was really beautiful. You can see them in this photograph. Those are not flaws in the photo. They're not spots on the sensor. These are actually uh, little bits of, of ice just floating around. So very cool, very cold, and uh, but it made for a beautiful scene. That's what all this mist is here really is, is a lot of that mixed with some mist coming up from the water. So when I look at this photograph, of course, it's very dark. Um, I've got the sun blowing it out up here. There's a lot, the, the scene is, is great, but there's a lot about this that's not right, that's not good. And, um, you know, I think when I was shooting this, and I think when all of us were standing there uh, shooting this on the McKay Photography Academy tour, um, you know, we were just trying to figure out what the right exposure was with a really bright sky. And, you know, snow is incredibly bright and reflective. And so you've got all this competing information. You're trying not to lose shadows and, um, but also try not to blow out highlights. So, you know, it's a good case for underexposing. And you can see up here in my histogram that it definitely errs on the side of being a darker photo. We've got way more peaking in the in the shadows uh, on our histogram, and um, you know, so let's let's work on it. Let's see what we can do to this photograph. Uh, first of all, let's try to get it looking uh, more presentable just from a exposure uh, standpoint. So let's bump up the exposure. Obviously, when we do that, the sky becomes almost useless, especially around the sun here. Um, but fear not, we're gonna get this to a good place. Okay, so doing that and then bringing up my contrast, let me just see what happens when I do that. It, it's pretty nice actually, it, it definitely evens out um, the, the highlights from the shadows. Um, I'm gonna pull the blacks down next, see what that does. And eh, it gets a little weird around the corners and the edges. You don't wanna get too crazy with that slider. Let's pull down the highlights. Pulling down the highlights at least brings some of the detail back around the sun here. I don't normally shoot right into the sun, but there are times when it's kind of a, I think a pretty cool effect. And, you know, coming through the clouds, it, it, it could be hit or miss. You, you may not like that, but I'm not gonna let this ruin the rest of it. I, I really like this scene. I thought it was beautiful with this stream of, of water, which is actually fairly warm water, hence some of the steam you know, with the stream flowing right through the snow, just this beautiful S curve, just, it's a beautiful uh, scene for sure with this pillowy snow everywhere and these barren trees, just a lovely, lovely scene. So let's pull up our texture. Sometimes in a situation like this, I like to see what messing with the, what messing with the presence of the photo will do. There's your present sliders right here. Let's just see, kind of going back and forth, clarity. I mean, clarity does a pretty cool thing to it. Um, just see, kind of maybe right in there, dehaze. I do like a little bit of dehazing on it because because of the mist, which I love the mist and I love the diamond dust, but I like to be able to control how much of it is you know in the photo because I think if, you know if we hit the backslash key, uh, it takes us back to the beginning and you know it's a very misty scene. Um, Okay, so the next thing I wanna do, I'm already seeing that I've got some chromatic aberration. And you know, depending on your monitor and how closely you're looking at your photograph, you might not really see this, but I'm seeing a little bit of purple fringing down here. So let me zoom in, see that? It's hideous. Um, that's a hideous thing right there, this purple and green fringing all over the water. And it tends to exist normally uh, towards the edges of a photo. If you get right in here on the tree in the middle, um, if I can zoom into it, you don't really see a whole lot of it. There's there's a slight amount on the sides of the trees over here uh, on the edges, but uh, it gets more pronounced as you get 
closer to the edges of the frame. And uh, the lens I was shooting this with, let's check that out. I'm going to go to the library and just see. I was shooting this with a 24 to 120 f4 Nikon lens. It's a fantastic lens, but it is known to have some pretty significant chromatic aberration um, depending on your aperture and just, you know, the, the subject. So what we're going to do is go down to the lens corrections and we're going to click remove chromatic aberration and that should take care of most of it. Let me zoom back into this area here. Okay, it got rid of most of it, but there's still some purple here. So what I want to do is go into manual and drag this slider and you can see it just disappearing. Look at that. See it there? And then it goes away. And I'm not really seeing a whole lot of green. I don't know that I'm seeing any other green fringing. I feel like the automatic setting sort of took care of, well, you, look, there is a little bit of green as you get really close to the edge. So let's pull this over a little bit and see if that helps it at all. Mm, it's, it, it's somewhat helpful as long as it's not hurting the photo further. Okay. That looks pretty good to me. Let's go up to fit, bring it back out. It definitely cleaned up that purple and green nastiness that was around the edges and the highlights uh, in the water there. It almost feels like the photo is tilted to the left, like this side is down. So I'm going to click R and bring up my crop tool and I'm just going to turn it a little bit to where the trees are pointing straight up. Obviously this one's not pointing straight up, but that's nature, you know, but the average of these trees should be, you know, pointing straight up. So we want to just make sure we're we're getting a pretty good horizon there. And that looks better to me. That looks more believable. Let's see if I um, want to do anything else with my crop. For now, I'm going to leave it in the two by three ratio. Another thing I want to do, there's quite a bit of vignetting going on on this image. And, you know, I have not added a post crop vignette to this photo, but if we go back to the lens corrections and go to profile, click enable profile corrections. And look what it does. It stretches the photo out. It, it takes the sort of bulging effect away from it and it completely eliminates the vignette. So that's a nice thing to do. So don't forget about these sliders. They're very important. Um, you know, they're not gonna just completely make or break your photo, but they definitely will take it from this to this, which to me already looks a lot better. Okay, let's see what else we want to do to this photograph. I'd like to check the sharpness. Um, I'm going to pull the slider way up, you know, maybe like 125, which is high. And this is not a one size fits all kind of thing here. You can't just take a bad photo and crank the sharpness and expect it to look better. And I don't find this to be a bad photo, but even a good photo is not going to look way better just because you drag the sharpening slider, but we are going to see what it's doing. And, you know, let me, you know, I'm zoomed in. So let's pull back. You can see definitely that it's sharpening the edges, but the problem is it's also sharpening all this information between the edges. And we don't need this area to be sharpened. Um, you know, this needs to look pretty smooth. So what we can do is slide the, uh, the, the masking slider up and watch what it does. You can see, I don't know if you're able to see that on your screen, but it gets rid of all of that just kind of junk that, that exists between the sharp edges uh, without decreasing the sharpness on those edges. And uh, let's see how that looks. In fact, I'm gonna just going to mess with my detail a little bit, see what that does. This uh, makes things a little more crunchy, not, not great. Uh, radius. You just want to play with this stuff until you, you know, until it feels about right. I'm going to zoom back out and, uh, you know, looking at it like this, I'm not seeing a massive difference, but just knowing that it is as sharp as I can possibly get it right now, you know, that's a good thing because if I go to print, then at least I know there's not going to be any issues with, with sharpness. The next thing I'm going to do now is look for distractions in the photograph. And there are quite a few things that I want to take out. Um, all these little dots in the snow, these, it looks like little pieces of snow and, and branches and stuff sticking up. Now, you know, you might look at that and think, well, that was there. Why would you take it out? But to me, you know, you look at this side, it's much more pristine. I just want to clean up my photograph. I want to take out some little highlights that are in shadows that are just a little too much. I also want to take out trees that exist right on the edge and then just fall off the frame. Um, 
this tree right here is not doing much for me. I may take it out. I'll take this tree out and this, and you know, just a lot of these little, little details that I want to take out. So to do that, I'm not going to use Lightroom. I am going to go into Photoshop because I just feel like it always serves me better to go into Photoshop. So to do that, I'm going to click command E and there we are in Photoshop looking good. And the first thing we want to do is create uh, a duplicate layer here. So I'm going to click command J that will bring up a duplicate layer. So now that my background layer is buried beneath this one, if I mess anything up, I still have my background layer, which is the photograph that we exported from Lightroom. So let's start with our healing, br a spot healing brush, I, sh I should say. Um, I'm going to click the J key and that brings up the healing brush tools. Remember, we've got the spot healing brush, the regular healing brush, and the patch tool. I want to use the spot healing brush. You know, people have different methods, different ways that they go about this. I am just used to using the spot healing brush tool, and that's what I prefer to use for, for, this, for this type of image. So we're in that tool. It's a very small brush because all you can see, if you can even see anything, is just a little plus here. So we're going to make that larger by hitting our right bracket key. And we'll kind of make it about that big, maybe a little bit bigger. I'm going to zoom in and work this side of the photo. So we're going to start with this tree. I just feel like it's too close to the edge to really fit the image. Now I could crop, you know, I could crop this, but I'm just going to start by taking it out. So let's go do that. Um, let's shrink that brush back down a little bit by hitting the left bracket key. So I'm going to click here. And then I'm going to go up to the top, hold shift and click again. And voila, it just gets rid of the whole tree very nicely, huh? Um, I think I would like to get rid of this and maybe this here with the shadow, get rid of this. And it left a little bit of something there. I'm going to get rid of these little dots. I call them dots or, you know, you can call them blemishes, whatever you want. But as I go along and do this to this photograph, it just cleans it up. These are things I would never paint into the photograph. So I don't really want to see them in the photograph, uh, because they just feel like distractions to me. And, um, if you start to see things that way, it's going to change the way you, you edit and, uh, you might not care about that stuff, but, you know, oftentimes in professional photography and in competitions, all of these little things get graded and they matter. So let's take a look here. We've got this tree over here. I just feel like I want to see what it looks like without this tree. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in again. I'm going to hit the L key, which is going to bring up my lasso tool. And you always want to make sure that you are in your standard lasso tool for this type of, uh, uh, correction. So we're in the standard lasso tool. I'm just going to draw an irregular shape around this tree, right click fill. It should say content aware here. Click okay and see what it does. All right. Let me click command D that gets rid of the marching ants. Okay. It got rid of the tree and from a distance, it's not too bad, but obviously when we zoom in on that area, it didn't do a great job. It, it really messed a lot of things up here, these lines. So I'm going to undo that and undo again and undo again. Let's, let's try another way of maybe removing this tree. So let's try this patch tool. We're going to go up here to the patch tool, do the same kind of thing. We're going to draw around this tree, but now we're going to click it and drag it. And even though what you're seeing in that little preview is an exact duplicate, when you let go of the button, it's going to kind of fill it in, in its own way, in a very similar way to the content aware fill. Let's see what that does. And then click command D 
it's better. It's better. Um, but we still, you know, we have very much that repetitive thing going on because it literally just took what was here and pasted it there. So I still don't love that. I'm going to click command Z, command Z, get it back. And um, what I might have to do for this one is paint this out with a clone stamp tool. So let's click the letter S, the, the S key. And I'm gonna grab some information from over here and paint it here. And then we're gonna to have to go grab it from other areas to sort of make this look believable. So while we're in the clone stamp tool, we wanna make sure our opacity is at 100%. And we're gonna go over here and hold the option key down, then click your mouse. Now it's taking this information over here and it wants to paint it right in here. And it's pretty good, it's doing a nice job. And it's just, a, it's kind of just erasing the top of that tree. Now this little line between the trees and the snow, it should line up, but it's not gonna quite line up. So what you can do is go down here, option, click, and now take that area. And you see how it gives you that little preview? You can just paint along there and kind of go up a little bit. And um, not bad, it, it's a little bit funky there, we'll fix that. And to do that, we can actually go over here maybe and grab some of this and just kind of play with it, just kind of back and forth until it looks correct, which to me, that looks pretty good there. Um, so now let's, uh, let's see if we can paint the rest of this tree out. I'm gonna grab this information right here, option click, and you wanna just make sure that little preview looks like it's gonna line up. And it does, it looks pretty good to me and we'll drag it down. And you know, if something doesn't quite line up, see what happened? I just went over that side and it repainted it there. So obviously that wasn't what I wanted to do. I'm gonna leave it for now though, because I'm just gonna grab this information here, paint it in there, paint this in here. Sometimes you have to do this heavy lifting to get the effect you want. So, you know, sometimes you can't just content aware fill. The, 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 the computer is smart, the algorithms are smart, uh, the software is smart, but sometimes it doesn't know what looks good. It just does what it thinks you wanna do. And um, clearly that's not always the case. I'm gonna shrink this brush down a little bit now because we're getting into a tight little area. And uh, you can see what I'm doing. And hopefully this is making some sense to you. A lot of back and forth. You have to really think about this like an artist. You have to step back and think about like, does this look correct? Does it look authentic? And, um, but you can see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, that tree is all but gone. We've just got a little bit of it right there, which I can actually take, probably take this information here, paint that in. Not bad. Let me do that. Yeah, that looks good to me. Look at that, I got rid of the tree. It, it, it's it's so much better without it, I think. And uh, here you can kind of see a little before and after having taken those elements out. There's before, there's after. It just cleans that whole side of the photo up. I hope that makes sense to you why I like to do that. Again, it's up to you. You don't have to do that. Um, there's no right or wrong here, but it just, you wanna ask yourself what is serving the photo and what is not. And there are some purists out there who will tell you you need to just you know keep everything that you saw because that's the way it was, but I think they're wrong. <laughs> um, okay, now let's we're we're gonna get back into our uh, spot healing brush tool. We're gonna clean this up. Make sure you paint over the shadow as well. Don't always just paint over the the actual uh, piece that's sticking up out of the ground. Yeah, that looks good. Shrink that brush down a little bit. Again, using your bracket tools, you can increase and decrease the size of your brush. It's good. It's looking really nice. This is a piece of that diamond dust. It's really cool that it exists and you can see it all in here, but I don't really like how bright this one is because it could look like a defect in the photo. And that's the main reason why I want to get rid of a lot of these things is because if they look like defects, then you know, the, 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 the viewer doesn't know, they're not going to know the difference, even though you might know, um, let me get this little bit out of here. You know, a lot of times what I'm doing is I'm saying like this scene looked so beautiful and it would have looked perfect if fill in the blank, you know, if this wasn't there, if that wasn't there, if this was moved over, if that was moved over, you know, so 
obviously we can't go through and, and, and live our lives that way with every photo. We can't just, um, nitpick every little thing, but you know, some of these photos, I, I see the potential in them and I'm just like, I want to realize that potential. I want to get it to a place where I feel like it looks finished and looks just very much worthy of, of hanging on the wall. See that one right there? That, that could have looked like a blemish in the photo. Let's do a little before and after again. Just look over here to the, look, look to the left and uh, also look to the right and just see as things change. Just getting rid of those distractions. Okay, the last ones I wanna get rid of, I believe, are gonna be like this tree here. And I might even get rid of, uh, I might even get rid of this tree here. I feel like this tree, even though it's there, it's just kind of on its own. And I wanna see what it looks like without it. But first, we'll get rid of this one. Spot healing brush, I think we'll take care of this, but we're gonna just have to see. I'm gonna click it here. I'm gonna hold shift and click it here. Ah, look what it did, a weird thing, but that may be okay. That may be salvageable. Yeah, now it's starting to do kind of crazy stuff with the edge of my frame. Let me undo that, undo that. I think my brush size is just too big, so I'm just gonna paint right over that and see what it does. Not bad. I mean, you know, there's a little bit of that there. Yeah, that gets rid of it. Increase the brush size just a touch and go like this. And you know, sometimes you'll start to know pretty quickly whether this spot healing brush is gonna really do the trick or not with with multiple passes. Okay, that's that looks good to me. I mean, you know, check your details, make sure you're, you know, cleaning things up and they're looking correct. Um, but Overall, this doesn't look, to me, it doesn't look like I did anything over there. Zooming out. Okay, you know, once I saw this tree here, um, let me get something where you can see what I'm pointing at. Once I saw this tree here, I couldn't unsee it. So I have to just see what it's gonna look like without it. I'm gonna try the content aware fill. So clicked the L key, got my lasso tool, gonna draw around it and see if it does a good job. Sometimes it's worth just giving content aware fill a shot because it may do the trick and then save you some time. Let me click Command D. It's okay. It starts looking funky there. Undo, Command D, undo, undo, undo. All right, so I'm gonna try to use my spot healing brush tool again to see if that will help get this out. So let me shrink my brush down. Actually, I'm gonna increase it when I get down to about here. I'm gonna hold shift, click my button, and then go here. Do that, hold shift. Okay, that's that's working better. We'll, we'll come back and clean some of that up, but that's working a little bit better. And then I'm just gonna paint right over that. Ah, that's much better. That's much better. It, it, it almost looks like there's just a tree kind of going up here that's getting blocked by some snowy branches there. Um, but if you want to clean that up even more, you know, what, one thing I might wanna do is paint that out and paint this out. Yeah, that looks, that looks better to me. That looks much better, it looks very believable. It's a word you'll hear me use a lot is believable. I just want things to look like they really happened, you know, like that's really what it would have looked like. Of course we do, you know, we don't want anything to look, um, well, you don't want it to look artificial or affected in some um, digital way. You want it to look very beautiful and, and natural. The top of this tree coming up here is bothering me. I'll pull that down. And you know, this tree kind of just fades right up into there. It doesn't really matter to me. I think overall, I like what I'm seeing. One thing I would like to do is maybe take this little bit off of this tree. I like that tree. I just don't like seeing 
that branch there back up. And let's take this branch off too. And you know, while we're at it, let's just take this one off. I'm not gonna take all of them off. I feel like it, it needs some of them, but um, yeah, I, I like that. I think that looks pretty good there. And uh, you know, that's, that's pretty good to me. Um, I don't know this area. Let me just increase my brush size for you. This area right here kind of bothers me just because it's this dark uh, interruption along here. So I want to see if there's anything I can do to that that would kind of help smooth that over. So one thing I could do is I could grab some information from here using my clone stamp tool. So I'm going to click the S key, increase my brush size. I'm actually going to decrease the hardness of the brush. It's, it's a soft brush right now. I'm going to go up to like 90 and I'm going to grab this information here, holding option, clicking, and then I'm going to just paint a curve here. And, you know, as I do that, you see this kind of weird area where it gets darker and it, it looks very fake. But this is just a, a, a first step. Let me see what happens if I paint over that little black edge there. Yeah. Okay, back up. That's going to look better. Now, it's not there yet because it looks just completely horrible. It looks like I just painted it on there, which I did. Um, and we don't want that effect, of course. I think I'll just come into there a little bit. Now, the way I'm gonna fix this is I'm gonna decrease the softness of my brush and go back down to like 10%. And now I'll grab the areas just around this and do a large brush, option click, and then go along that edge and it'll kind of fill in that nasty edge there. Now we get this weird area where there's like some shadow and then all of a sudden there's no shadow. So to, to fix that, I'll uh, grab this area here and we have that soft edge. So we're able to feather this thing ever so slightly and just see how that looks. Maybe shrink the brush down and grab some information there, feather that. It's not bad. And you have to bear with me because I am just experimenting. You know, sometimes I'll get way down the road on something like this and realize it didn't work. And you know, that's all right. That's just all part of it. You know, it's just trial and error, but that's kind of cool. It, it, it kind of makes it look like there's like a little dip there or something. Um, now you might look at that. Let me turn the, that, that layer off. You might look at it and say, that doesn't matter. You know, why would you get rid of that? It didn't matter. It, it, but to me, it just cleans it up. Your eye doesn't really go there as, as much. Um, I want to see one thing. Yeah. I feel as though we need more shadow here because it's, uh, you've got some shadow right there. So I, I'm actually going to option click that and try to paint some of that shadow in. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. Let me paint a little bit of shadow in there. You know, you could also dodge and burn and, and kind of affect some of these areas, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to, to give this some texture and make it look believable. Uh, undo that, that one didn't work. I am gonna try the uh, burn tool. I'm in my mid-tones exposure at 25%. Let's just see if that, yeah, just kind of burn that a little bit. Just kind of makes it look more natural. Yeah, I don't know. You might see that and think you don't like it. Um, I might go back and let me undo that last burn. I feel like it was a little much. Uh, yeah, undo all that. You know what? I think undoing those three things was fine. I think it looks good. I don't want to sit here and, and, and micro focus on that anymore. I'm going to go back into Lightroom now. So I'm going to click Command S. That's going to save it. It's going to save this version of it. And now when I go back to Lightroom, um, it should pop up. 
here's the original version and we're waiting on the new one to show up in, in Lightroom and it will. And you'll in just a second here, you'll see this one disappear and be replaced by the new shining, beautiful Photoshopped version. And uh, any second now, it should be there. And there it is. So to me, that looks better. I like that better. Now we still have issues. We still have this weird, you know, halo of orange light around the sun. This could be a great black and white photo. In fact, I'm going to hit the uh, V as in Victor key and kind of see what a black and white looks like. It does look pretty nice as a black and white, but before I commit myself to black and white, I'm going to do some more editing here. I'm going to bring the crop down a little bit, the top of the, the uh, of, of the frame. Um, we're going to do a freestyle crop. So I'm going to click the padlock, bring this down. You know, I'm going to cut some of that sun out and get the top of the frame closer to the top of this tree. Just feel like that looks better. I'm going to click the L key twice to bring up my loop view. I really like that. I think it looks good. Uh, and you know, the only other thing, this blue sky, I mean, I like it, but it is a little bit of a distraction to me because it's just, you know, out of nowhere, there's just some blue sky. I want to just see what happens if I, you know, pull the saturation back on the blue sky. So let's just pull the blue saturation back. The only problem with that is it, it, it decreases the blue in the snow. It almost makes the photo look like a black and white photo but then you still have this orange and it's just, that's very ugly. So we're not going to do that. Um, sometimes you just have to experiment. What happens if we change the hue of the blue color? Um, nah, it starts getting, you know, it starts looking turquoise or, you know, it's just not good. Um, purple that, that doesn't work either. You can check your luminance of blue that darkens it a little bit, this brightens it. Um, you know, so it may be one of those things where I just don't want to mess with it. Um, I, but I had to at least try. I wanted to see would that do anything for me that would serve the photo. The next thing I'd like to see is as I'm looking at it, I want to pull the crop in from the left side. Now I know we spent time removing things over here, but sometimes you're just going to do that. I want to see what happens if I get the, the edge of this curve a little closer to the edge of my frame and see if that affects it. Also, what that will do is it'll take this tree out of the center and move it over towards the, the left third a little bit more, kind of throwing my uh, symmetry off a little bit. Let's see what happens if we do that. Not bad, not bad. That makes me want to bring the top down a little bit more. Click the L key two times. I think that's my photograph right there. I think that's it. The only thing now, I want to see if I can remove some of this orange. I'm going to pull my orange saturation down. Definitely gets rid of a lot of that in the sky. Let me pull the yellow saturation. Oh, that really gets rid of it. But you know, there is a little bit of like golden light coming through here and I don't want to lose all of that. So one thing I can do is I can take a brush by clicking the K key. And uh, I can go up to the saturation slider and I'm not going to pull it all the way down, but I can decrease the saturation around here and just kind of lose some of the goldenness. You know, it's not, it's not the end of the world, but it's, you know, it's kind of nice. Now also I can darken that area a little bit just slightly and see if that helps with the, the blown out sky. Uh, I want to see how much. Yeah, we do have quite a bit of leverage to work with, but obviously I'm not going to do that. Um, there is detail up there. There is detail, which is good. It's good to know that we have the detail if we want to utilize it. I'm pulling that saturation way back actually. And it actually works to have the saturation. In my opinion, it works to have it all the way down. Um, let me click the K key. Now this is the Photoshopped version. So it's a different file format. So what I want to do now that I'm in a different file format, sometimes these sliders will affect the photo differently than when it was just a Lightroom uh, raw file. Um, so let's pull the texture up a little bit more, pull it back. You can give it this kind of dreamy misty look by pulling that back, or you can give it a little bit more of like a refined detailed look, which to me, I, I kind of like, I kind of like that a lot. Um, clarity. Ooh, the clarity does a nice thing to it as well. Dehaze. We already dehaze. I don't want to dehaze anymore. And then I'm going to pull the saturation all the way down, do that black and white thing. I like it. 
I think black and white just looks fantastic. What if I pull my highlights down a little bit more? That brings some of the sky back. Yeah, saturation. I'll bring the pull the vibrance down too, just for good measure. Shadows. I always just like to go back one last time and work these and see if there's anything that can kind of finish the photo off nicely. Is there some slider that's going to give it some sort of drama? And you know what? Bringing the blacks back really seemed to uh, it just helped with the contrast even more. And pulling that texture and clarity up a little bit shows you a lot of the, the kind of the texture of the snow, which I really like. And uh, let's click L twice. I think that looks really, really nice. Well, thank you for enduring that. I know that was a long edit, um, but sometimes that's just how it goes. You know, sometimes these photos take a lot of work and I could probably keep working on this more and more. I could come back to it tomorrow and decide I want to do something else. I might want to flip it around or I might want to uh, completely start over or there might be more little distractions I want to take out here and there. There might be uh, a number of different things. You know, maybe I've got too much contrast. Maybe I pulled the highlights down too much. You know, sometimes you, you have to sit on it for a while and then decide, have I done too much? Have I not done enough? But that's okay. You know, the more you refine this process and get better at it, the the better your photos are going to be. The more uh, worthy they're going to be of hanging on the wall, and and you know, entering them into competitions. All of that is going to help you get better and better. But hopefully, these videos are helping you as well and giving you something to think about. I know they're giving me a lot to think about. So uh, thank you so much, and uh, I'll be back with another video soon. <laughs>